morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to the cluster talks. Innovation procurement, how to best match demands and solutions is uh, the topic of today. My name is Javila Kropaida. I will be uh, your moderator and I want to welcome you to this session, which I know is in competition almost with Ursula von der Leyen's State of the Union speech, but there is still time. You can stay with us and also after uh, after the cluster talks is over, you can still also rejoin and uh, hear uh, information there. So welcome, thank you for joining. Uh, we are happy that there is great interest in this. And uh, I will just briefly say the topic, why we want to talk about this specifically. As you know, startups and small SMEs are innovation leaders in many markets. They develop new products, new services, they strengthen the competitiveness of uh, European enterprises. They create jobs. They are, however, faced with a challenge to develop products that meet the needs of the demand side and fit the right clients. I have a great product. Why is nobody interested? Is the wording I have recently heard from uh, experts. And here, innovation procurement may come in. In innovation procurement, SMEs face a similar challenge when they are called to come up with innovative solutions to meet the needs of a buyer. So the acquisition of innovative solutions by public and private organizations enables better and more efficient service delivery to customers and citizens. Uh, thank you for joining. I, I see that there are many uh, more of you now. Uh, so how do startups and SMEs ensure that their innovative solutions will meet the needs of public buyers? So this is what we will discuss today. And we will discuss how innovation procurement procedures aim at better targeting the demand side needs. Uh, as you know, the cluster stocks uh, are regular meetings brought to the cluster community by the European Cluster Collaboration uh, Platform. So that's the topic of today. I will just briefly say a couple of words on the agenda. We will hear some news from the platform. We will have the European Commission perspective uh, on innovation procurement. We will have a panel debate and uh, this will be followed as always by funding opportunities that you can make uh, a good use of. Uh, so this is what the meeting will consist of. And uh, some housekeeping rules, uh, slide deal, is a platform which is very instrumental for us in the sense that you can answer the questions that we pose so we know what your needs are. And uh, it may also become, the meeting may become more instrumental to you because of that tool, because you can ask your questions, you can answer uh, whatever aspects of innovation procurement uh, you would want to hear more of and, uh, and uh, certain things like that. So uh, I will ask you to scan the QR code whenever uh, there's a possibility or use the hashtag to ask uh, to answer your question. Uh, if you want to ask questions here uh, for this debate, you can use the Zoom Q&A function uh, and the chat function to comment or to share links. Uh, if there are people who want to raise their hands and just speak out loud and speak their questions, speak their, uh, say their comment, uh, raise your hand and we will give you the floor. And also I have to inform you that uh, the session is being recorded and that the recording will be published on the European Cluster Collaboration platform. So these are the housekeeping rules. And uh, let's move to the news from the European Cluster Collaboration platform. Nina Hopman is here with us and uh, uh, the floor is yours, Nina. Hey, thanks, Irina, and good morning to everybody. Um, we would like to share uh, the following news with you. Um, first of all, I don't know if you've already heard, uh, the Commission adopted a proposal to facilitate cross-border activities for non-profit associations in the EU, meaning that this can improve the functioning of the internal market by removing legal and administrative barriers for non-profits that either already operate in one member state and wish to um, continue to do so in another member state or that want to develop um, their activities in another and so, so this is a very interesting proposal because it introduces an additional legal form of a European cross-border association ECBA, 
in member states' national legal systems, usually for the EU and for clusters of interest in um, topic to look into. There are already more than 300,000 nonprofits uh, currently present in more than one member state, and there are nearly 200,000 others that could potentially engage in cross border activities. So we will stay tuned uh, on this. If you are working on a in green investment projects, but you would like to receive additional technical and financial expertise, you can apply to Green Assist, which is an advisory initiative, and it can help you to develop a project that um, faces any technical or business challenges, but that is aimed to help the environment, or if you already have a business case and you would like to improve the environmental impact of the project, um, you can have a look at the screen assist advisory initiative. It's uh, very practical because it has a lot full of handpicked experts from around Europe covering different investment areas, uh, both uh, looking at geographic and green aspects so that uh, they can target your very specific needs and projects with the right experts. Next, we would like to inform you about our closest week regions events. Maybe you've already heard of them or participated in one. Um, at these events, we like to discuss good practices where clusters play a role in regional economies and our drivers of the current transition and how we can um, better uh, create and promote the collaboration between clusters and regional stakeholders for the industrial development of the regions. Um, we actually have one this week in Borges in Bulgaria, and you see the upcoming clusters meet regions on the screen. It will be in France, in the Czech Republic, in Germany, Romania, and Poland. So save the date uh, for one or more of these and register via the link in the chat. We also invite you to come to an in-person cluster talk that we will hold at Brussels on the 12th of October where we will discuss um, results of the clusters made regions, the role of clusters in twin transition. And we will have both the speakers from the commission and from the cluster community that already conduct clusters made region events in their regions. So very interesting and you get to know us personally. So register until the end of this month and meet us in Brussels. You're, of course, also invited to join the EU Industry Days. They will take place on the 4th until the 6th of October in Malaga in Spain. A big event, your flagship annual event focusing on key industry, industrial policy discussions, uh, connecting, networking, and of course, boosting knowledge um, of the European industry on the main, um, main challenges that we are facing currently was talking about the green and digital transition, about proving resilience and to work on the European Open um, uh, strategic autonomy. Plus, we will, uh, of course, also look at business relations with Ukraine and European defense. And with that, back to you, Chavita, and to our first speaker. Thank you, Nina. We will move straight to the Keynote, the perspective of, of the European Commission, Innovation Procurement Policy Officer, Anita Port is with us. She's from DG Pro at the European Commission. Uh, thank you for joining, Anita. We're all here. Yes. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? And could you start uh, my slides, please? Yes, thank you. So, yes, hello everybody. I'm Anita Port. I uh, work actually for C2, which is the public procurement policy department in DG Grow. And there I work in the uh, strategic team working on how to uh, use uh, public procurement as a strategic strategic tool to shape our uh, future and you see also in our slide whereas uh, in the past uh, public procurement is uh, mostly regarded as some kind of administrative process for efficient internal market and fair competition there has been a huge uh, shape change in perspective uh, to how we see nowadays public procurements and that is really 
a tool to shape the internal market, to provide sustainability and resilience, and to meet uh, the objectives uh, in, in EU policy through public spend. So here you already see some projects that are flagship projects that to our opinion will uh, contribute uh, to that. And I will uh, just highlight a few things in this presentation for you. I will stay the whole meeting and I'm also available for further questions. So if you could go to the next slide, please. So this is a quick overview on uh, public procurement as a driver for uh, twin transitions and uh, resilience. You see a huge amount of the GDP is spent through public funds and has to go through public procurement. There's a huge amount of public buyers across the EU. Um, the other uh, graph is about uh, the thresholds because above thresholds, it's publicized in TED and below the thresholds uh, that are smaller assignments coming from a uh, public sector. And then you see examples of public sectors that spend through uh, public procurement. Uh, please go to the next slide. Now, our uh, policy for fostering innovation is that we aim at developing collective intelligence uh, on this topic through our projects and we also try to support public buyers and suppliers um, with the information they need to meet each other to know what's going on and to work closely together in uh, providing services to the public sector that are innovative and modern. Uh, we focus also a lot on developing joint actions between different buyers in the EU, as some cities in Europe, for example, all face the same problems and uh, look for the same uh, products to, to solve those problems. Um, go to the next slide, please. Um, but I will talk more about uh, uh, that, that project later on, and more specifically the public bias community. But first, I would like to go into a little bit the legislation. So there is the public procurement uh, directive that has provided new methods to stimulate the procurement of innovation. Uh, one way to legally stim stimulate that is that the directive contains different processes and methods of procurement that would uh, stimulate uh, the procurement of innovation. Um, in this overview, I just mentioned a few. Uh, the public bias community also tries to provide information and quick insights uh, on these procedures, how they can be used, how suppliers can be participate in that. And I will just uh, maybe just because it's a lot of information and I cannot tell you everything and I also want to prevent to become too technical, I would like uh, just now to highlight uh, one and that is the innovation uh, partnership, which might be very uh, interesting. So if you could go to the next slide. So what is so special about the procedure of the innovation partnership? Because when you hear the word innovation partnership, it can have uh, different meanings, but the specific meanings within the legal context of the procurement directive is that research and innovation uh, and procurement uh, of the product will take place in one procedure. That means that the buyer together with the supplier is developing and testing the product. And after the research and developing phase, usually there is a commitment that if the phase is successful to move on to the procurement phase in one go. In other words, multiple suppliers or one that took part in the research and innovation procedures uh, can sell their projects directly to the contracting authority in one go without organizing a new procedure. Uh, and this is a very interesting tool to work together with very innovative suppliers in the EU uh, to create uh, innovation in the public sector. So please go to the next slide. So 
what our team also uh, did was uh, following uh, the the data in the TED, which you have seen is the data above the 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 the, the data uh, register for above thresholds contracts. That means for services is um, uh, about contracts that are more than two hundred thousand. For works in constructions, the threshold is about. Uh, 5 million. And so we studied uh, the spans that were registered in, in, that, uh, in that database called TED for three years. And these, this uh, research is uh, representing some findings on the use. Um, you will see here uh, some numbers. The, the, the full uh, PDF is also on the uh, public buyers uh, community. And we see an increase of the use of this me method. So that could indicate that, that indeed public buyers are looking more to this procedure to work together with suppliers. Uh, move on to the next slide, please. Um, also on the platform, what might be interesting to you is that, uh, and I will also later on put up the links uh, in the chat, um, Currently, we're launching a uh, survey on how to, uh, to drive innovation procurement together with uh, startups and SMEs. We know specifically for these smaller companies that it's really uh, difficult to participate in, in public tenders that can be uh, caused by the length or the complexity of these procedures. And of course, these smaller companies don't always have um, the capacities or the resources uh, to, to really study these standards or to legally understand them. So what we actually are uh, preparing to do is to create uh, support through an external contractor to help public authorities and startups and SMEs to uh, develop programs that will make it much easier for startups and SMEs to deliver innovation to contracting authorities. We have some ideas on what is needed from for, for contracting authorities and startups to do so. But we also specifically at this phase look for your input because of course uh, our ideas uh, are just our ideas. You are uh, very knowledgeable on what is preventing you in real life, in real uh, day cases. And I also invite you to send in some examples uh, what, what is hindering you in taking part. And more important, we look for po uh, possible solutions like what would be needed, how should we design public procurement uh, procedures uh, uh, in current legal context so they will be better accessible. There, there are some good examples of programs around Europe, but this would be a chance also for you to let your voice be heard so we can design the program to, to, to your actual uh, experiences and needs. Um, I will put also the link up to that news item that explains more about this survey uh, in the platform. Um, please go to the next slide. So we have created a digital platform. Uh, it has launched 17th of April this year. It's an open digital space for public buyers, suppliers and researchers to collaborate and exchange knowledge on the specific topic of uh, public procurement. It works with communities of practice on spe specific uh, procurement topics. The aim of those uh, communities of practice, we call them, is to develop hands-on tools and guidelines and products uh, that will help others uh, further. So, so the real objective of this platform is to reuse the products um, we make. So, for example, if one public buyer in one country has developed a kind of tool that is worked really well and is really useful, this platform makes it possible to share that knowledge and the tool with other buyers, but also for suppliers. And the platform is made to, to be like the, the place to look uh, for information on public procurement and more specifically public procurement of innovation in the EU context. So also about funding opportunities, uh, projects, 
uh, all kinds of information. I will put a link up so you can browse and, and see also uh, if it's uh, relevant for you. So please do the next slide. Yeah, so there uh, is much more to tell you, too much to put in 10 minutes. That's why also is another reason we create this, this platform. Uh, I will, uh, we have a newsletter, a monthly newsletter that is a pick of all interesting things happening on the platform. I hope uh, the scan me code uh, works, but otherwise I can also put up um, the, the, the links. You find also the sub subscription link uh, through the platform. Uh, and I suggest you have also a browse and a look there uh, for further in interaction. So I think this was my short introduction. I look forward to from questions to you to answer them. And I will give back the floor now to Sevilla. Thank you so much, Anita. I'm very glad that you will stay with us throughout uh, the panel debate. Just very briefly, I want to uh, sum up the innovation partnership tool and uh, just to make sure if I got it right, basically uh, selling directly to contracting authority in one go. That means less procedures and less public tenders. Or is that, you know, is that the essence of the tool for startups and SMEs or would you say, would you single out uh, any other advantages? Well, from the research, we have found uh, very high complex innovation partnership covering more than 60 million of uh, worth in, in contract. But we have also found contracts of 500,000, 200,000, very small ones. The procedure itself uh, and its complexity is due to how big or small the assignment is, how big or complex uh, the assignment is or how small. So I think uh, there are many possibilities also to act as a subcontractor, but I think the most important takeaway from innovation partnership is that if you do research and development projects as a standalone, you sometimes develop already relationships with those in the research and, and development phase and if it's successful, you might want to procure it. But if you don't use the procedure of innovation partnership, research and development is excluded from the directive. So at the end of that project, you would need to put up a public procurement procedure to actually procure uh, the ideas and the products developed in that research and development trajectory. The mm. innovation partnership helps to go on together. So it's not that there is no obligation uh, to do a procurement, but the procurement has been done quite in the beginning in different terms, where you put out the problem that needs to be solved. You put out a clear process of all the steps that will have the no goes and uh, the goes when it's successful, when it's not, and more or less what you expect and the maximum price to, to come out of it. And then you can go into the research and development. And if it is successful, you can procure for those suppliers that took part in the research and development mm -hmm. phase. And there is liberty to do the trajectory with multiple suppliers where you have competing ideas uh, and prototypes. And there is a possibility to, to just focus on one single prototype and go in the trajectory with one supplier. There, there are different ways to legally uh, organize it but 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 the core is that you would do both phases together with the supplier you selected at the beginning of the journey both phases uh, together okay that's very clear thank you so much and also uh, you mentioned the survey uh, to support uh, to develop programs for startups and smes and uh, you're expecting their input so i think we will be able to do that in our panel discussion as well to hear from them uh, what would help them uh, on driving innovative uh, public procurement together with, I mean, driving uh, innovative public procurement uh, with startups and SMEs and uh, possible solutions, but we will hear from startups and SMEs as well. So we will delve into the panel discussion in just uh, a minute. Thank you so much, Anita, for now. And uh, as I said, thank you that you will be staying with us and we'll be able to comment on any questions that arise to our participants. 
and uh, we will move to the next slide now. Uh, before we get started, before we get into the panel discussion, I will encourage everybody to use Slido. Uh, if you don't want to scan the QR code, which you can do now because the code is just on your screen, and you can basically take a photograph of that, and then you will get a link, and it will direct you uh, straight to uh, where our questions are, or you can go to slido.com and uh, under the hashtag innovation procurement, you can find the same questions that we'll pose to you now, and we will expect your uh, very brief inputs. So I hope that the app is clear. And uh, the first question that we've got for you is, how uh, are you involved in innovation procurement? Uh, and there are multiple options, so multiple replies. You can uh, choose uh, whatever suits you. If you're not involved, if you don't have any knowledge about it, do mark that option too, because that will be useful for us. We will know that we have to explain things in greater detail to some of you. And I think this is dominating so far. We've got a uh, few answers, but uh, uh, some of the people are not involved and have no knowledge about it. So that's very important for us to hear. We will uh, talk about it uh, in as, as basic a level uh, as we can. And some of you are saying that they are not involved, but they are interested. Uh, there are some who say that they are actively searching for opportunities, which is uh, kind of the same. So that's very good that you're, that you're interested. Uh, some are informing 10% actually, so uh, one in 10, informing SME startups, uh, helping SME startups in the process, that's also less than 10%, organizing innovation procurement uh, as public buyer, I think that's zero. So uh, we don't have anyone organizing innovation procurement as a public buyer among us, but we've got... Um, most of the audience not involved but interested not involved and having no knowledge about it that's 25 percent so one four absolutely not involved no knowledge about it but i hope you have an interest uh, and possibly that's why you're here and you have joined uh, this cluster stocks so actively searching for opportunities that's important as well okay so we have got uh, the picture of uh, a feeling of uh, what you may be interested in and uh, what uh, interests uh, your field of expertise. Uh, and we are ready to start our uh, panel uh, debate with three distinguished guests, uh, project coordinator, public procurement innovation officer, regional development of uh, Andalusia, the project is Procure for Health, and that's Carlos Laranieta Gomez Caminero. Thank you so much for joining Carlos. Uh, I hope we will be able to see you. In a second, good morning. Good morning. Uh, joining us as well is uh, Johan Yul, project manager Clean, which is an environmental cluster, uh, Denmark, project Drink. Uh, Johan, I hope you are with us and uh, good morning. Yes. Thank you for joining. Good morning. We've also got director at Big Biomed, which is uh, the project in Obayos, and that's uh, Jorge Gonzalez. Uh, good morning, Jorge. Good morning. And uh, we will begin by uh, providing you the possibility and us the possibility to hear from you uh, by basically introducing uh, your cluster, introducing uh, the project uh, that you represent and the results that you have achieved, or just a very brief introduction uh, with a slide each. So I think that we let Carlos uh, begin uh, uh, and we're all ears. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everybody. And, and once again, thank you for, for the invitation and the opportunity to, well, to widespread the word in about procurement of innovation. Uh, I've seen in the initial question that there's a lot of interest, but not much knowledge about it. So I think it's it's very important that that, that we get involved into this tool. As I was saying a little bit, I, I believe in its potential and the more people that are uh, the more organizations that is, are involved in it, are using it, it will help us greatly to 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 develop and improve its efficiency. Um, well, as as uh, 
First, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Carlos Larrañeta. I work for the Regional Ministry of Health of Andalusia, specifically for the Technical Office for Procurement of Innovation. Um, I'm here as, as the coordinator of the Procure for Health community. Uh, the Procure for Health community, what, what do we do? What is our main objective? Well, it is to widespread the adoption of the Procurement of Innovation tool among the health and care services providers across Europe. Um, how are we doing that? Well, we, we rely on the on the basis of human development is, 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 is capacitation and, and foster cooperation among the demand side of innovation. Um, why are we doing this? Was because us and the, and the European Commission that is supporting us acknowledge the, the potential that the procurement of innovation has to to have a big impact in the improvement of the public services. And along the way, we can foster greatly the innovation ecosystems around us. Uh, why do I say this? Well, because if done right, I really believe there is no better way to, to uptake the adoption of innovation solutions to tackle the challenges of public, public services. Um, why do I say this? And let me let me explain it as a um, just a position with the with the classic uh, research, development, and innovation approach. Uh, in this classic in the classic approach, uh, 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 some uh, someone from the innovation ecosystem, a company, a startup, a uh, uh, research institution, a uh, technology center, they foresee a, a, a problem somewhere where there can be an improvement. Uh, to try to come up with a solution and if they're successful they seek for a market i think someone said at the very beginning that this this usual question of i have a great product but there is why why there is no one interested in this well when we use the procurement of innovation uh, tool uh the demand defines the need then we work together to find a solution and we are successful you already have the market for it so uh, my first tip would be to get to know the tool and the process and engage with the from the very beginning of us with us. Uh, the slide I, I brought here is about the procurement of innovation journey, just to 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 have a high level overview of what is the process. Um, and when I say engage with us with the phase one, phase one would be the 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 assessment of the need by the demand side, the definition of the challenges we have that could be solved or improved through innovations. Phase two is when we have to go and seek and, and, and look at the market, but there might be a solution already in the market. And if not, we have to ask the, 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 the potential developers if they see themselves capable of, of, of delivering a solution. Phase three would be to choose the most suitable tool among procurement of innovation, pre-commercial procurement, procurement of innovation itself, or the innovation partnership, which I agree is a very interesting tool. And phase four will be to, if we are successful, will be to scale the solution and deploy it. Um, just let me say one more, one last thing. Uh, phase two and phase three, uh, uh, they are they're quite well developed. Uh, quite well developed or quite well known what is the process should be. Uh, phase one and phase four, the assessment of the team by the public buyer and the final scalability and deployment are those that need still need to be systematized and uh, and it's very important that demand and, and supply side work together to 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 improve those 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 part of the process. Mm, one final thought. Uh, procurement of innovation when you first approach to it might seem a little bit complicated, complex. Um, I really think it's not complex from the technically or conceptually. I see the complexity in terms of engagement as there are many stakeholders that should be involved in order to have successful delivery by the end. So once again, um, we need the supplier to engage with the demand from the very beginning of the process. Um, well, that would be my initial thoughts. Okay, thank you so much, because uh, as you have seen uh, uh, during our poll, people have you know, the urge and the need 
to get the knowledge, but they don't necessarily have it just to make sure, because when you say that with the innovation procurement, the, dem the demand defines the need, would we maybe give just a, you know, an example of how that opposes to, as you say, the standard approach, would we just give an example so we know what we are talking about? An example of a concrete uh, assessment of a need? Yes. Um, okay, we have uh, plenty, but I, I, I can talk about uh, maybe one of the projects that we have right now on board, and it has to do with the you know, bacterial infections we gather in hospitals. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, you know, these high resistance bacteria that get these uh, sepsis infections that are quite hassle to, to, to human health. And there is a high rate of, of, of well, deaths. And each day that goes by before we have the right diagnosis, 20% of the deadly rate Prices, so we need the the problem is that in order to have a rightful um, diagnosis, we need to do a cultivation of the bacteria, and that takes time. So we have submitted a um, procurement of innovation project to down the time of diagnosis to from a few days to a few hours. And that is a challenge that we launch it to the market and that we are right now in the last phase of the project. And I think we're getting really, really interesting results. So that's the kind, I mean, I'm talking from the health, from the side of the health sector. Yeah, that's okay. the kind of concrete challenges okay. that okay. we launch. Okay, okay, that's very useful and that's very interesting and important to hear. Uh, do stay with us. Thank you so much for sharing this. We will move to the introduction of Joan. Uh, and uh, we hope she will uh, present her project. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, I'm uh, Johan Jung, and I'm a project manager at uh, Clean, the Danish Environmental Cluster. Uh, and I'm here today presenting the, the Brink project, which we do the project management of. Um, Brink stands for Brokering Cross-Border Innovation Through Clusters. It's very much built on these same ideas as uh, Carlos mentioned, and also tries to help with this same process as was quite nicely described here. Um, I think in addition is we really focus on grouping uh, buyers across borders. Um, and then the, the idea is that we're kind of testing this, uh, as this little image shows the role of clusters, um, which will be then in the middle here, as this middleman and connecting the innovative ecosystems, the SMEs and the public buyers. So we are trying to develop on, there was an initial project that made a model called Innobroker model, and then we are trying to adapt this a little bit and test and see um, the best way that we as clusters can support this matchmaking and uh, process and what we can do. Uh, some of the concrete uh, activities that we will have in the project is, um, of course, the public procurement of innovation. We will try to gather two to five buyer groups and go um, help them through the whole process of procurement. And we are about halfway in this project and currently working with two to two, two or three tracks. Um, so there's room for more. Um, and I can share with you a little note on the progress is that uh, we see a lot of interest in this topic and talking and collaborating, but uh, we see uh, less success in committing the buyers to actually spend the money and do the procurement. But I'm sure we'll get uh, much more into detail with these topics, but that is kind of the main challenge that we are we are facing in the project. And um, then another important um, activity in the project project is gathering both the pro professional network of the public buyers, so trying to gather them in knowledge sharing activities and capacity building activities, and the same for us uh, clusters, which we also call innobrokers in the project. Um, so throughout the project, we'll develop training sessions both for SMEs, for innobrokers, and and for public buyers. Uh, to try and yeah, just uh, do the capacity building. And, and I think as Carlos also mentioned, it's maybe an area where there's a lot of interest in exploring, but actually not a lot of deep knowledge on how we, we do this. So I think, uh, yeah, that is very interesting. Uh, I think maybe I will leave it at that here to start with. Okay, okay. just uh, very briefly, because uh, you say mm -hmm. less success in committing the buyers to make the procurement happen then, and you say that maybe we will expand on this throughout the talk, and I hope we will, but 
very briefly, if you had to answer yourself, why? What, what is the reason behind it? What would the initial thought mm -hmm. be? I think there can be many, many reasons, but my feeling right now is that in our project, we don't have the, um, the public buyers are not part of the consortia and we don't have money to give out to support the procurement. So it has to be a decision from the public buyers themselves that they want to invest in this right now. And I think um, with all of that is new, it's always maybe for public organizations, a bigger decision to spend money on something where the success is maybe more uncertain or you don't know as much what, what you get. So I think, um, it's my feeling that this is just a bigger decision than winning and it's hard to come in and maybe push someone to go there if you can't offer that that the money is also a big uh, big thing because they have to prioritize yeah. it and maybe it's good to a uh, learning i think is that it's maybe good to have this commitment or know that it's something that's already been decided that they really want to do this or they're engaged from the beginning in this because it's not just uh, we I think we are convinced already it's always a good idea but if you're dealing with public money as well you have a lot of other considerations and also long decision times to uh, yeah to make such a decision. Thank you so much for your remarks that was really useful and interesting to hear as well we want to move now to Jorge uh, who will speak about his project. Thank you very much. Uh, we are part of this project that is called InnoBuyer. And it's very handy that uh, Joan just mentioned about the, 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 the challenges of the of the procurers in terms of money and so on, because what we are trying to do here, and this is also connected to what Anita said, we are trying to uh, move uh, or um, push demand-driven co-creation projects. What does it mean, demand-driven co-creation? Demand-driven means that the challenge is proposed by the public organization. Okay, it's not a technology push. It's not that a company has the technology and wants to commercialize that, which is very fine. But here, what we are trying to do is to identify an magnet from a challenger, for example, a healthcare organization. Now, what we do is that once we have the challenge, then we connect that need with someone, uh, usually a small and medium enterprise that has the potential to solve that magnet with their technology, with their innovation. And once we have that, then we help them to co-create the solution, okay? They work together. It's not a um, supplier or, or customer relationship. It's a partnership between the two. And then we evaluate if the solution that has been co-created is successful or not. If it is successful, which in our experience, most of the solutions are successful, then we provide legal support in order to procure. As part of the project, procurement is not supported. And we actually think this is the hardest part. That when, once you have a, a successful solution, then the real challenge of these demand-driven co-creation projects is to move from successful innovation into procurement. But we can talk more about this later. This concrete project, InnoBuyer, is basically a leaner, cheaper, and faster um, variant of the pre-commercial procurement, public procurement of innovation, innovation um, partnership that it was mentioned before by, uh, by Anita. What we want to do is to create a lower entry uh, barrier for all those involved so they can learn how the process works. They can um, understand what are the, uh, the, the challenges, so to say, of the whole process. And once you have this, uh, uh, this knowledge, then they can go up into these other instruments that require more effort, more money, more time. This instrument is, is now up, up and running. We are about to uh, uh, publish what are the challenges that we have identified in the, um, in, with the challengers, and then we'll be launching a call for a small and medium enterprises to participate. So I strongly recommend you to uh, join our mailing list and social media in InnoBuyer if you are one of these SMEs. And actually we'll have a second chance to identify challenges. So if you are also a challenge, you can, you can join us. Uh, yeah, we provide not only support, but specifically money. So Joan, uh, we are here for you also for the challengers and also for the small and medium enterprises that participate in the co-creation. And that will be it. So we'll come back. Thank you so much, Jorge. Uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your introductions. Uh, Anita of the European Commission wants to comment immediately, so we give her the floor. So yeah, sorry, when it comes to these topics, I get so excited, but also stimulated that I have to make a comment because before I heard the comment that public authorities often don't have the money for pu public procurement of innovation. And that triggered me a little bit because in my past, I've been working uh, for the city of Amsterdam, which is a big pro public procurer, exactly dealing also with these financial aspects. And whenever a public buyer says this, I don't have the money for it, they actually saying, I don't want to change my internal organization to really make the innovation with the suppliers. Because the way some authorities currently are, are having their budget is very siloed. And the way innovation happens is to break down these uh, silos and to reason from different business cases, different opportunities. And when you start to do that together, then there are opportunities. In my experience, I haven't even seen even more cost efficiency after the innovation than before. And so when I was procuring innovation there, we got very wonderful innovation solutions in the tender. And then the first thing that was apparent is that they told, okay, we can implement this innovative solution, but the first thing that has to change is your organization to be able to implement it. And there the barriers and maybe some resistance occurs because the public authority must be willing to do that. And if you're not willing to do that, then automatically you don't have the money for it. So sorry, so, so what, I had to what, correct yeah, okay, that a little Anita, bit. That's very good. But is there a solution to that? Uh, what should we do for public buyers to be more flexible as I hear? Well, I think what the InnoBuyer project does is a very great agile project is where you make very first uh, analysis of the problems and you start to explore and also show the public authority the potential of, of a solution. Then there must become clear what are the organizational um, consequences of implementing that solutions and then beforehand there must be discussion do we really want to go on this journey take some risk with with uh, high gains in in our project uh, prospect and if you have good public managers they say okay it's worth taking the risks because if we do so the gains will be so good and benefit beneficial to the public uh, community we need to serve that we want to take that risk and only if you have taken that decision then you can uh, actively start to work together but i agree also be, with one of the previous speakers that decision must be taken at a higher level in the organization because otherwise it's not going Thank you, Anita. We will move to the next question. Unless someone wants to react, I think Carlos has raised his hand. Thank you so well, much. Since we're dealing with the topic of, of, of the public buyers and how to foster the, the, the use of this tool, just to, to, to agree with what Anita is saying, um, I think it's not a problem about budget. I mean, uh, you, you, you show the figures at the very beginning, uh, how much money do we spend in public procurement? Only using a small amount of it for, for procurement of innovations will be a lot of resources for, for this. It is a matter of, of innovation culture among, among management, uh, the management part, the high level management part of the, of the public services. Um, that's why I think I said it at the beginning, the more the merrier, uh, we have to foster this and this has to become strategic. We are really, we really have a lot of tools and a lot of funds for innovation. But as I said at the, begin, at the beginning, I cannot think of a better tool to really uptake the solution too much. What is the topic of this webinar? The, the, the demand and the solution. So... It's still is the, the war has to be spread and it has to become something strategic because the, the potential is there and the resources are there. Just, just wanted to add that. Thank you so much. Uh, there is a question uh, from Mark specifically to Jorge. Uh, what type of challenges have been identified? We have identified 15 challenges, one five, and they are cross sector. 
there are a lot of them in health, but they are also in public transportation, for example, Metro Barcelona, they are from uh, town halls, from cities. So it's, it's varied. There, there is not only uh, one sector, and that's that's the nice thing because then we can learn from different sectors. What they have in, mo in common is that they are small, so to say, uh, we only fund them with a 60K, uh, and the idea is that they it takes, the co-creation takes around nine months. So, so this is a learning exercise and coming to Anita's and Carlos, as we, of course, the goal is to do a, cha, um, a cultural change, but we are in this chicken egg problem. When they say we have no money, but it's like, I don't have money to try what you are talking about and I don't want to change my mindset. That's what I really do, but it's just uh, four words, they just get rid of you. So the thing is that how can we get step by step into this cultural change? And for that, uh, what we are trying to do in Innovaya and other projects is like, uh, again, meta-innovation. What other instruments, what other approaches we can do, how training and so on, success stories, for example, we can put on the table so they can say, okay, I, it is worth it. I'm going to give it a try. First, small, and then little by little, higher. We are still in the evangelization phase. Even if we are in innovation uh, procurement has so many years, there are so many procurers that they are not familiar with it that we need to go to be very pedagogic and to show what is there and why it's important. Would you agree with what Carlos said in the beginning that uh, it may seem like a very complex uh, procedure, technically, uh, procurement of innovation, but it's just uh, that in terms of engagement, it is uh, actually complex. We have to differentiate the concept, the model from the instrument. There are instruments like pre-commercial procurement, the version from the European Commission, and even at national level, PPIs, that how they have been implemented, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money. But there are other options. Innovaya, for example, is another, another option. In demand, another project that we did is another option. So the important thing is that it is demand-driven and in co-creation. And for doing that, and Anita was mentioning other tools, like, for example, fun, um, design contests and so on. So we have to differentiate the instrument from the concept, the model. And if we focus on the concept, the model, we will be able to make things cheaper, easier, faster, that they can go afterwards into more complex instruments. OK, so let's focus on the idea. It is the challenger that puts the challenge on the table. It is the solver that helps the challenger, and at the end, this will be a procurement. This can be done with a lot of different instruments. Thank you so much. Let us now ask the audience, uh, again using Slido, uh, about what they think we can do to better match solutions and uh, demands. Uh, if we could have the Slido question on, uh, we could also uh, get some ideas from the audience and maybe uh, the panel. Uh, participants uh, would want to comment on that. Um, Anita uh, just reacted to the comment saying, first you identify the issues that need to be addressed, then you match it later with the best legal procurement procedure. What can we do to better match solutions and demands? This is our general topic of, uh, of today and uh, innovation uh, Procurement is just the tool, uh, one of uh, the ways to do that. But we want to ask you what you think uh, we can do to better match solutions and demands, how uh, we can bring the solutions from companies uh, closer to the demand of the buyers, in other words. So this is the question that we uh, posed. And uh, since uh, so far, we are not... Uh, I'm not seeing any uh, replies. Maybe I could just address this question to uh, Johan. Johan, what would you say? Um, I think, uh, yeah, there are many things that we can do to better match the solution and demands. I think maybe one thing that uh, I will highlight first is that we've talked a lot about this, how we uh, specify the needs of the, the public buyer. And that maybe sometimes we don't, we can be creative with how we say what we need. We don't need to say, I need this many uh, tools to clean the floor in this way at this day. We can maybe just procure for clean floors. And then it allows for 
other options. So I think that's one um, really interesting thought that we've been uh, talking a lot about that we can work with the public bias to see actually what are you asking for when you are procuring and uh, opening this up and phrasing it in a way that allows for innovative solutions to, to apply. I think that the word that comes up mostly from the survey is also identify, which uh, coincides with what Vanessa said. Uh, and uh, also the other speakers, you identify the issues that need to be addressed, then you match it later with the best legal procurement procedure. Uh, so identify is the most common uh, solution, then there are many other matchmaking, uh, procure, uh, subsequently priorities, evidence, uh, challenges, healthcare, interaction, events, infrastructure, appraisal, market analysis. How important is market analysis? Can anyone comment? Because uh, basically, uh, when we talk about innovations, experts say that the sooner in the process you bring in someone who knows your market, an investor who understands the market, the better off you, you are. Uh, can anyone, uh, does anyone want to take uh, this on? Does anyone want to comment on this idea? Uh, yes, I can say okay. something. I think um, you you first identify what you actually need, and sometimes you don't know what you actually need. And if in that phase, to uh, uh, yeah, you can share uh, certainly your insights. Uh, but uh, uh, first, that's a very delicate process because you think you know what you need, but then there's not actually what you need. And then there's novelty on the market. So if you do market analysis, uh, you don't sometimes know the top-notch products that are not on the market, but maybe even uh, will be even better to buy because uh, procurement processes take long. And by the time you bought it, that are more, more delicate. So if you have really have your procurement strategy as a part of that, you will look what is available on the market. But I think even more is important is to scout what is going to be on the market soon as well especially when we're talking of procurement of innovation because what is available of the market is a little bit also out of scope because then it's really not innovation because it's already uh, off the shelf product I, I, but i would uh, give the floor to Josh. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I did not see who was the first one to raise their hands. So I'll just go by the sort of alphabetical order. Carlos, you wanted to uh, to comment. Well, I, I just wanted to comment on, on the identification part. Maybe they were, afterwards I can say something about the market analysis. But, but yes, uh, as I said at, at the beginning, um, and I divided in my slide the, the, the procurement journey in four phases. And I said, phase two and phase three are quite, let's say, well known. And there is... It can be improved, obviously, but there are, you know, every support, every fund, every process starts with the, okay, you already have your need, but there's nothing on how do we identify that need. And let's take into account the public organizations, and in the case of healthcare service, are very, very complex organizations. So the identification of that need cannot be handcrafted let's say we have to systematize that and i can say what we are doing here in andalusia we we have taken procurement of innovation as a very as an strategic point for us this is why we have a technical office devoted to that there are 11 persons 11 of us are only working on procurement of innovation here in the healthcare sector in andalusia and we are working to assess those needs to systematize the assessment of those needs um for that, we are we are included in workshops. Uh, every internal stakeholders we we consider clinicians, management of the hospital, management of the labs, and end users like uh, patients, organizations, and so on. And we initially set the needs. But what I wanted to say, and since because of the audience of this of this uh, webinar is companies and startups and clusters. Uh, once we have those internal needs, before uh, uprising those needs to, okay, these are a priority for us, 
we stress it with the innovation ecosystem. We presented, even before a market analysis or an open market consultation, we presented to the innovation ecosystem around us, companies, um, universities, research centers, and we tell them, okay, we are identifying these needs. How, what do you think about that? How can they be improved? Do you have, a, this is a first, let's say, market analysis before the official market analysis. And it is something that I really understand and that's why I say that we have to engage with the supplier from the very beginning, because at the end of the day, yeah, the, the market analysis and the open market consultation is key for us to finally shape the, the tender process we're going to launch. So, yeah. Uh, market analysis before the official market analysis. Okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, Mark is uh, commenting, saying open market consultations can be undertaken state of art reviews, et cetera. And uh, Jorge, do you agree with what Carlos has just said? Uh, yeah, I would like to share three points. First of all, if, if the organization, the challenger is not very mature, sometimes what it works very well is to do it bottom up. So the idea is that then you consult to those ones in the trenches, in our case, the doctors. They know what the real problems are with the facing the patients, for example. The, the good thing about doing bottom up is that then you also have a champion which is the promoter of the, of the need, meaning that he is really interested in getting that problem solved. And you need that kind of drive through the whole process. The second thing is that bottom-up is good, but if you don't combine it with the strategy of the organization, if you don't get a top management to buy into that, then it will go nowhere. You can have the co-creation, but it will not, do not survive the value of death of uh, successful pilots. So what we think it works very well is to combine this bottom-up and then having top management to say, yeah, among all the different options that uh, uh, doctors are proposing us in our case, we are going to select this one, two, three. And we commit, and that's the key word, uh, word to, to make them happen. So, and then what after that then is what it has been called the open market consultation. Our suggestion here is that you rely, for example, in clusters, rely on those people that they are very familiar with the SMEs, the startups, and so on, and that they can bridge between the SMEs and the healthcare organization. If you do it by yourself, it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, um, I mean, more than time is that you go to Google, and Google is not good for this, okay? Or you just connect to your suppliers that you already know, and then you are missing out all the other, uh, so to say, up and coming that they could also help you. So this three topic. Start bottom up if you don't know exactly what you want. Uh, make a commitment from top management from those ideas that are selected, and then leverage associations, clusters, foundations, whatever is close to the uh, uh, supply side to help you in understanding the state of the art. Thank you, Jan. What would you say? What is the role of clusters as facilitators for the SMEs and the demand side? Hey, yeah, exactly. I just wanted to add maybe to a uh, point on um, this, that really the clusters are a really good connection to this, the market. And I think also adding to what Anita said, that you don't just need the market engagement on knowing what is already on the market. You need also the to know what is going to be there. And I think that is also what the clusters can do, because we would also often invite them, maybe look to the universities and what are what's happening there to include them in a discussion of of the need that the public buyer has. So I think that that this is a really uh, strong uh, asset of the clusters, and especially at least um, we are also in part of an international network of clusters. So I think uh, also when we deal with a public buyer, maybe here in Denmark, it's uh, very strong that we can really help get this need all over Europe and not just to the Danish local SMEs, because when you are dealing with innovation also, it's maybe not uh, right next to the city that the innovation is being done. So I think this um, also a little bit what we are trying to do in the process, really um, yeah, getting, getting the message out and going a little bit broader um, is very, I think at least where we have a really strong, um, something that we can contribute. Um, but I think also what's mentioned is like helping the public buyer think around what they need. Um, I think we do have a lot of competences often in the clusters to kind of help facilitate 
um, workshops and help come with maybe we work with some design thinking tools to go in and say like we have here models for you to rethink what you need and to just think around in a new way what's actually the issue and what you want to solve so I think that's also some concrete thing that we as a cluster can come in and, and offer. I'm very glad that the discussion continues on so many levels because there are people on the chat, people commenting here, and then people commenting on the chat what has been said live. So for example, Irina has joined us and thank you so much for being so proactive after collecting, uh, generating scientific evidence on the needs, a prioritization procedure of needs is needed because there are more needs than can be solved. A major challenge, she says, still seems to be the determination of the willingness to pay for a solution of the highest unmet needs, which you need to determine before procurement, I guess. Uh, just to start rounding up, uh, Jorge wanted to comment, right? Because you say that it is yes, very good link. From Oily. Just to make a last selfish promotion of the clusters, cluster can be also very valuable in translating the initial unmet need identified bottom up from into something that the uh, small and medium enterprises, the market will understand. Because sometimes, in our case, what the doctor states in the first uh, submission of the need, so to say, is something that only themselves understand, okay? And we call it a polishing process from the admit need to the challenge. And there, again, someone like a cluster that understands both ends can be very helpful to make this transition between what you ask and what you need that the market can understand. So put us in value, okay? The clusters, we are there. We are here to help put us in value. Uh, thank you so much. Just to round up and to sum up very briefly, if everyone could say, I know that we have discussed this, but in terms of very concrete actions, uh, our topic of today, how can we better match the demands and the innovative products and services? What are the concrete actions uh, as, a, as an organization, as a person, you know, uh, as an institution? What should we start? What should we start doing uh, right now? Uh, let's start with Carlos again, very briefly. Okay, uh, oh, that, 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 that question will, <laughs> can, can, we could have another whole webinar on that, but just... Then uh, what is the first step now? Let's say this, uh, what uh, is the first step? Yeah, since we're in a cluster talk, let, let's say that, that uh, procurement of innovation is the, is the paradigm of co-creation. And from the demand side, the, the public buyers, we have a limited knowledge of the market and, and what it can offer us. So... The first step will be to really engage clusters with public buyers for to, to share the knowledge about what what's out there. What what can we do together? What what are the potential solutions we can deliver for for our challenges? Anita, would you comment on this? Engaging clusters is key at this. Yeah, yeah, for for us, sure. Also, our platform that we have created has a very strong link to the cluster collaboration uh, platform. We we took it also as a link in our platform, uh, because our platform, for example, is called the public bias community, but it also target suppliers that really want to learn about how public procurement is done and more how they can engage in public procurement of innovations from some trajectories I've uh, know and I've seen is that it's really sometimes hard uh, for businesses that deal with both. So with back public sector and private sector to understand what are the specifics of the public sectors and what are the specifics of public procurement uh, <clears throat> that you need to keep in mind. And for that, we also created this platform for the suppliers that if they want to know what are the particularities of public procurements under the directive, they can find hopefully, and we try to build much more of that in, in the future, more support uh, on that when, when they have questions or, or, or look for information from their specific user needs because, uh, one other thing I would like to mention is that public procurement of innovation is also a little bit spread about different DGs in the European Commission. They do different things. And for outsiders, it's not always easy to know what the different DGs do, how they 
where can they find this bit of information, that bit of information. This platform is also a tool to bring that together and make it more understandable, not only for public buyers, but certainly also those who supply to public uh, sector are very much a target group for this platform. Thank you. And one final word to uh, Jan and Jorge. Um, yes, but yeah, I think uh, I agree a lot with what was uh, being said. I think um, what uh, what Jorge said or the InnoBio project is doing with kind of de-risking for the public buyer, trying this out or, or what was said with these small steps, I think that is really, really important here and just uh, making it easy for the public buyers as easy as possible to try it out because then I think this um, priority or prioritization of doing it more and the top level strategic decision will come more easily when they see the success. So I think that is, um, yeah, really whatever we can do to make it feel easy for them to go into um, and then support the SMEs to be able to answer these tenders and not be scared of the, the big uh, task because yeah. they can also participate. Thank you so much, Jorge. So if you ask me for one step, uh, we are organizing a conference where um, we are going to share new instruments to make innovation procurement leaner, faster and cheaper. We are going to share best practices, lessons learned and use cases, success stories. We are uh, making a very networking wise uh, event. So if you ask me for one step, attend the conference. Okay. When is that? So Do you want to link promote it? Chat. Yeah. You give me the chance, that's, that's my point. You give me the chance, I will take it. Thank you so much. Okay, so do we just know when the conference happens? And uh, Right, it, the... it will happen uh, 15th of November in Murcia, Spain. The link, uh, the uh, details are in the in the chat. Uh, okay, but I will, the link I will, is in the I will, chat. I will, I will be happy to share more information. Uh, yes, thank you for sharing. All of the links are actually on the chat. Uh, there is one important thing that I would want to ask everybody to do, because as we learned at the beginning, there are questions on innovation procurement still, and it's quite new, and sometimes it seems complex and scary. Uh, if you could open the Slido app and just say which aspects or what types of innovation procurement you are interested in, uh, which aspects you would like to hear more about, uh, that would be very, very useful for us. So which aspects of innovation procurement interest you most? You would want to find out more about what types, what aspects of innovation procurement you're interested in. Any, uh, you know, one aspect that you would want to single out, just put it in. Uh, Slido innovation procurement is the hashtag or QR code if you haven't scanned it yet as we approach towards the end of the cluster talk. Uh, that's for the next next steps, and I think that would also be useful for the European Commission, for Anita, and uh, for all of you. New instruments, prioritization of procurement, lessons learned, uh, climate change. These are the words that are appearing. The poll is still active. I can see your inputs. Uh, no one word has, you know, appeared as the most common one yet, but we'll wait for that for more uh, questions for now i just want to uh, thank all of the speakers and the panel debate for their great inputs for their presentations for the insights for their i would say lively uh, discussion that i hope was useful to all of you and uh, will be useful for us to know what interests you more so new instruments is what interests you more is is what appears as uh, the most important aspect but uh, i'll just give it a couple of seconds or maybe we go to uh, funding opportunities now and then after that we come back to see what has come out as the most uh, important aspect one participant is still typing uh, and uh, i think that we can wait for a couple of seconds circular circular okay prioritization or for procurement, lessons learned, climate change, new instruments. Circular has appeared as a keyword. And I can see that no one is typing yet. Uh, so thank you for those answers. Uh, Nina, let's go to funding opportunities and see if maybe we can leave the slide still open. If not, thank you for those who replied. And uh, we 
give the floor back to the Cluster Collaboration Platform, Nina Hoffman, who will uh, present the funding opportunity. Thank you, and thanks to every one of you for uh, the great discussion. Very interesting to listen to. We brought uh, some opportunities related to our topic, and um, there is a call that will open next year. But you might already be interested to look at it. It's called Demand at Innovation Through Public Procurement. Here, uh, projects should contribute to I, um, identify community of EU civil security authorities with carbon use functional needs or innovative technology solutions. They should uh, test and validate the capacity of EU technology and the industry base to develop and produce uh, technology prototypes that meet the demands and to improve the delineation of the EU market for innovative uh, civil security systems. This is a call under Horizon Pre-Commercial Procurement. You see the topic ID in the chat, uh, in the screen, sorry, and the link in the chat. So if you're interested uh, in looking at this call, please do so. There's another one that is called Open Grounds for Pre-Commercial Procurement of Innovative Security Technologies. And here projects should uh, contribute to consolidated demand for innovative security technologies um, better informed decision making based on better understanding of the EU um, based supply of technical alternatives and improved visibility of the potential demand in the EU market. So, things we have to think about. It should also contribute to an increased capacity of EU public procurers to align requirements with the industry and uh, an increased innovation capacity through the aid of availability of innovative tendering guidance. Deadline uh, for the call is uh, the 23rd of November. Um, it's the Horizon Coordinated and Support Action with the topic ID on the screen and the link in the chat. Another call is called Accelerating Uptake Through Open Proposals for Advanced SME Innovation. And here, projects should develop a mature technological solution to address EU security policy priorities facilitate the access of civil security market to small and medium innovators, improve the cooperation between public buyers and small supply market actors, and uh, support stronger partnerships between EU security industry and technology actors to ensure the sustainability of the EU innovation capacity. That plan is the 23rd of November. Um, it's a horizon innovation action with the topic ID in the screen and the link in the chat. As always, uh, we also refer to the um, opportunities for SMEs under our Europe clusters. There are um, opportunities in different sectors for SMEs, for innovation, for training, for adapting business processes. And that can range from uh, water smart solutions, offshore renewable energy, textile, creative and cultural industries, um, energy intensive industries, uh, aerospace and defense, uh, recycling, automotive. So have a look at all of these um, open calls that are published on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform that are offered through clusters to SMEs. And I believe there are also many opportunities um, for innovation in these calls. And last but not least, I also want to invite you, if you have a great project idea, and we are invited to come to the Cluster Collaboration Labs. We will hold one in Jabuliana, Slovenia on the 25th to 26th of October, and one in Vilnius, Lithuania on the 14th to 15th of November. And these are interactive workshops um, where we help you to network and to mature project ideas and proposals to build a business case for your idea. So this is open not only to cluster organizations, but also to companies, to research organizations, actors from the civil society, from the public um, sector. If you have an idea um, that you would like to further develop, develop a new consortium, new opportunities, or look into specific funding, you're welcome to join us and register um, via the link in the chat where you find both events and the links to register. And with that, back to you too. Thank you so much. All of the links, as you know, uh, as always, are in the chat. Uh, and uh, we move towards the end uh, of this. And I would just want to encourage you to register for the next cluster talks, uh, 20th of September, EU funding programs, uh, 27th of September, EU funding programs as well, industry 5-0 uh, on the 4th of October, 
and then as uh, was mentioned already, uh, live uh, 12, 12 of October, Brussels, European Week of Regions and Cities, clusters meet regions, and EU clusters talk on clusters as drivers of regional economy. So do register for those. The link is also in the chat. Um, and uh, stay on for the State of the Union speech, which we have referred to in the beginning. Uh, it's streaming now. You can just go in the link here. It's also appearing, I think, in the chat. So you can just click and right after the cluster talk is over, do. Yes, it's on the chat. State of the Union 2023 by Ursula von der Leyen. So uh, you will not have missed either of the two important events of today if you go straight to this uh, website and uh, and see the streaming. Uh, stay on for the State of the Union speech. Uh, and we, we always encourage you, if you haven't done that by now, register on the European Cluster Collaboration uh, platform. Um, thank you so much. Thank you for being so active. Thank you for asking questions, for participating, and I hope that it was useful, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.